Warning, the profanity in this episode contains adverbs and conjunctions and shit. This week's episode of The Skating Atheist is brought to you by Stamps.com, Babbel, and by Blood Pressure Meds. Blood Pressure Meds. Because even before the heart attack, me getting through airport security without popping was pretty iffy. And now, The Skating Atheist. If you're a skeptic or apoplectic, if you say you're a righteous heathen or bosnic, then have no illusions, let go of confusions. John Bernay Ramsey may have suffered contusions, and the reborn have forsworn all the good porn. But even they are no match for a bugger peg of corn. So I'm glad that it's Thursday, and I'll say it again. We did in fact evolve from filthy monkey man. It's June 6th. And it's Atheist Pride Day. Goddamn right it is. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Cory Booker's, New Jersey. Boom. Ann Arbor, Michigan. What? And Waycross, Georgia. What? <laughs> this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, we'll swap some old headlines and outrun a boulder. I spend the week limbering up for ass coffee. And we'll hope this bullshit we got you isn't past its expiration date. But first, the diatribe. So I'm reading this book about 14th century France, and holy shit, you want to talk about a strong contender for the worst time and place to live in recorded history? There's one for you. I mean, you know, let's first acknowledge that I almost can't help but address that question from a position of privilege, because if you're gay or trans or black or a woman, your worst time and place to be spectrum is way broader than mine. But if you're looking for a time and place where it sucked for pretty much everybody, rich or poor, man or woman, minority or otherwise, 14th century France has a lot going for it. You know, the obvious one is the Black Death, right? Literally a third of the population is going to die in agony before that's over. But you've also got a Catholic Church that's corrupt, even by the historical standards of the Catholic Church. You got the Hundred Years' War raging on and off. You've got a papal schism, which matters for political purposes, but also weighs heavily on the minds of people who took this Pope shit hella serious in their day-to-day lives back then. Right? You've also got ever-increasing taxes, peasant uprisings, food shortages, widespread brigandage. And of course, with the benefit of retrospect and rationalism, we can look back on that era and we can see the terrible confluence of events that swirled together to create that unique vortex of misery. The plague from flea-ridden rats, the peasant results from the unrecognized increase in the value of labor after so many people died, the unending war from organizing your culture around warlike traits and then running out of easy Muslim cities to steal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But back then they had neither retrospect nor rationalism. So when you read the contemporary accounts, they have the whys and wherefores hilariously wrong. Granted, some people got shit right. There are plenty of warnings from back then that higher taxes to pay for the war were going to lead to peasant uprisings even before they happened. There was very little illusion about the level of corruption in the church or the pivotal role that that was playing in the general shittiness of the century. Some people even put together the link between filth and disease. But for every one of those correct guesses, and they were just guesses, there are a thousand other people blaming everything from declining morals to the position that the planets were in to bad air. And bizarrely, inexplicably one of the chief culprits in accounts across the continent and throughout the century that you will hear listed right alongside of like selling indulgences and sexual promiscuity or whatever is the sinful debauchery of pointy shoes. No fucking clue. Apparently they were all the rage back then. The chic set back in the 1300s were all running around in these fucking ridiculous pointy shoes. And, and don't think like jester shoes that like turn up at the end. These things just kept going. They, they looked like over sharpened pencils and they must have hurt like hell to wear. And they had become this symbol of decadence for the same reason that like 
you know, high heeled shoes might. They don't serve a function other than fashion. So they become an emblem of excess. And so religious and thought leaders all over Europe would take to the pulpit or the page or the fucking street corner to decry the moral depravity of pointy shoes. Why is God killing our families with festering boobos? Pointy shoes. Why won't he protect his faithful flock from robbers on their way home from church? Pointy shoes. Why won't he bring peace to this war that's cost so many generations of young men? Pointy fucking shoes. Of course, pointy shoes weren't the only stupid reason that they gave for the miseries of their day. They also complained that society was oversexed. The people had strayed too far from God. Women were getting too uppity. Immigrants were undermining their culture. Too few people attended mass and nobody wanted to work these days. And all of those reasons are exactly as accurate and intelligent as blaming the bubonic plague on pointy shoes. The difference, of course, is that we still use all those other ones every time we feel like the world is going to shit. The point is... That all these jackasses blaming the world's problem on gay marriage and bottom surgery are going to sound exactly as dumb as the pointy shoes guys to the history buffs of the future. When they go to read about the downfall of liberal democracy in the 21st century, the historian's going to take a break from talking about like you know decreased trust in institutions in light of mass surveillance, internal divisions driven by early adopters of social media. Wait, whatever the 2020 hindsight of history blames our generational suckitude on ultimately. And they'll give their readers a quick laugh by quoting from the contemporary dumbasses who blamed everything on dudes sucking each other's dicks. And, th- and that's comforting in a small and vindictive way, right? Knowing that your nemesis's place in history is slated to be comic relief. But it's also the kind of fact that you just might be able to weaponize. Look, the thing that shook me from my very deep-rooted prescriptivist tendencies, that is my belief that you weren't doing language right unless you were following the rules that I was taught in grade school, was reading quotes from supposedly intelligent historical figures freaking the fuck out because people had started saying walked and looked instead of walked and looked. They were right every bit as much as I was getting bent out of shape over stuff like nuclear and library and knowing how dumb they sounded to me and how dumb I would sound once society just accepted these more natural pronunciations swayed me when nothing else did. You know, look, I I get that some people are beyond reach, but some people who seem like they are aren't. And sometimes all it takes to see how much of an asshole you're being is a historical mirror. Maybe showing some of these zealots how perfectly their complaints line up with the lists that culminated in point these shoes back in the day is going to show them how silly they will sound to the future. Or, you know what, maybe it'll just divert their attention to the scourge of point these shoes. Either way, I feel like it's a win for social justice. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are nobody. Because I'm not here. But don't worry, we've been saving up extra headlines for you over the last few weeks, so there's going to be plenty to fill up the headline segment. But first, a word from this week's first sponsor, Stamps.com. Okay, but it looks really painful. You're not hearing the benefits. Hey, fellas. What you doing? Oh, Heath, finally. Uh, Noah installed a laptop into his chest. Not into, Eli, on top of. Right. Um, Can I ask why? (laughs) Why not? Now, all the time I waste not editing and working is a thing of the past. Yeah, seems like you might need to work on your work-life balance. Balance, schmalance. Now I can edit on the toilet while I eat, even in line at the post office. Well, Noah, if you want to save time you're spending at the post office, why don't you try Stamps.com? What's, oh, wait, sorry. What's Stamps.com? Um, well, what was that? Oh, my heart stops when I get an email. Right. Anyway, You can take care of mailing and shipping wherever you are, even on the go, with the Stamps.com mobile app. All you need is a computer and a printer, and they even send you a free scale, and you can easily schedule package pickups through your Stamps.com dashboard. Plus, you'll automatically see your cheapest and fastest shipping options from different carriers. Plus, you'll get rates you can't find anywhere else, like up to 89% off USPS and UPS shipping. Wow, that sounds great. Where do I sign up? Put more life into your work-life balance with Stamps.com. Sign up with the promo code SCATHING for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code SCATHING. All right, fellas, thanks. So, you, you gonna uninstall that? Yeah, I, I think I... Wait. Yeah, I think I will. Another email? Yeah, not another email. 
And now back to headlines from the recent past already in progress. And in Face Eating Leopard Academy news, one of the hard things about atheist activism is explaining that often the supporters of religion are also its victims. Not always, obviously. You know, religion is plenty happy to tell other people who they can marry, what they can do with their bodies, and what laws should be in the country they live in. But quite often we find ourselves fighting for the rights of people who, until religion came for them, were perfectly happy with who religion was coming for. And we got another case like that this week when a federal court ruled that, yes, a Catholic school can legally fire their drama teacher just for being gay. <sighs> so at some point, a lawyer said, Your Honor, that's obviously illegal. Just make it black instead of gay. It's so clear. And the judge was like, no. <laughs> or yes, and we still got this ruling. Right, Either yeah. way, fucking terrifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Who, who would have guessed that carving out exemptions to discrimination laws based on a class confirmed through self-identification could be problematic? Shocking. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. So first things first, big thanks to Elaine for sending us this story to scathingnews at gmail.com. Elaine included a drawing of a dragon girl with her story. And I'm not saying that's why we picked it. I'm saying that if you do include a dragon girl with your story, that you send to scathingnews at gmail.com will have your story and a picture of a dragon girl. Do with that <laughs> what you may. Okay, the email said, I don't have any cat pics. Here's a cute dragon girl I drew instead. At least one of you is into that. It's probably Heath. <laughs> and I'd... You know what? No comments. I'm done. Exactly. I'm done. Yeah, why, why, why I can't help but notice neither you included that in the notes, right? Like, yeah, I had to look that up for myself. <laughs> Creepy looking pastors. I got two of them. A hot dragon chick can't be bothered to copy and paste all of a sudden. It's a delightful dragon girl. I don't like to share. So the teacher in question is Lonnie Billiard, who began working at Charlotte Catholic High School or CCHS in Charlotte, North Carolina, way back in 2001 as a substitute teacher. He soon joined the staff full time, was beloved by students and won multiple awards over the years, including the Catholic Teacher of the Year Award. But then in 2014, shortly after North Carolina legalized gay marriage, Billiard announced on Facebook that he'd be marrying his boyfriend and CCHS fired him for that. Billiard sued the district for discrimination because that's the definition of what discrimination is, mm -hmm. but the school appealed under the ministerial exception from 2012 that our current Supreme Court expanded to teachers in 2020 that says all ministers, aka teachers, and other representatives of religion from a religious organization don't get all the rights because they're magic. Okay, so now we fire every judge if they're Christian, right? That's just how they're saying that's cool. Like, if they're doing Stalin, we should be doing Stalin, right? right? But I don't, Exactly. But I don't want to do Stalin. I'll do it. I'm saying I'll do it. Out, he's outvoted. Puzzle in a Thunderstorm wants to do that's a Stalin. That's, that's our that official no. position. <laughs> I'm getting loosened up. We should call it something else, but I want to do that. It's just one specific thing. Exactly. Stalin, it's a, it's a, a, doing no Stalin. A tentative no Stalin. Stalin. We're outvoting you. I'm getting loosened up. I think she would want to do a stuff. Get Nana. <laughs> I, I, Anna'd be on my side. <laughs> Next up in headlines, in Eli's Neighbor News, we have a story about <laughs> Samuel <laughs> Anthony Alito Jr., who continues to be a living Supreme Court justice because Eli has a family, blah, blah, blah. But we it. got another reminder about the consequentialist math on that last week when Alito gave an absurd commencement speech at a Catholic university. According to Sammy Gavels, it's really hard out there for Christian people in America right now because the freedom of religion is in peril. Well, I mean, the freedom of religion is in peril, right? Like, like if he had just said that, steepled his fingers, said bwahaha and called for phase two of the plan, I would get this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's part of it. All right. And a big thanks to Nick for the link. Scathingnews at gmail.com if you want to help out. So, Here's what we learned about the plight of the powerless American Christian from an American Christian who's one of the most powerful people in the country mm -hmm. and the author of the Dobbs ruling that overturned bodily autonomy in favor of the religious liberty to control everyone's body. Fun stuff. Mm -hmm. He started with obnoxious flowery language to signal his, you know, virtue of an obnoxitude saying, quote, troubled waters are slamming against some of our most fundamental principles, end quote. 
And one of those <laughs> hallowed principles presently beset by the deleterious aqueous erosion before our very cranial orbs <laughs> is <laughs> the freedom of speech. He explained during a literal speech. He mm -hmm. said, quote, mm -hmm. support for freedom of speech is declining dangerously, especially where it should find deepest acceptance. A university should be a place for reasoned debate. Today, very few colleges live up to that ideal. Okay, I just, I, I just, I feel like there's a lot of ways to make fun of Sam Alito that don't call me out directly, Heath. I just feel like there's another <laughs> we way. We love <laughs> your verbosity, <laughs> Noah. You. Also, this makes complete sense because Sam Alito is definitely the guy in your philosophy 101 class who interrupts attendance taking on the very first day to ask to define white supremacy. <laughs> 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 so, based on that starting point, you might be thinking a constitutional scholar at the highest level of the field might, you know, delve into a nuanced discussion of where to draw the line between protected speech that's offensive to some people and full-on hate speech that can lead to stochastic terrorism. But um, why would you ever think that? You're stupid. <laughs> hypothetical guy I created for that little bit. We're talking about an old Catholic white guy from New Jersey. Instead, he moved on to the destruction of the freedom of religion in the form of people think you're stupid sometimes and they tell you. Alita told his highly persecuted audience of almost entirely white Christian college graduates, quote, freedom of religion is also imperiled. When you venture out into the world, you may well find yourself in a job or a community or a social setting and you'll be pressured to endorse ideas you don't believe or to abandon core beliefs. It'll be up to you to stand firm. Against me, weirdly enough. But yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. I, he literally used a part of his speech to say that if you go out in your day and everyone you meet is an asshole, they're the asshole. Yes, sure right, did. yes. <laughs> and just to be clear, he didn't specifically mention the religious freedom of persecuting same-sex couples by denying marriage rights, mm -hmm. you know, the religious freedom of dibs on the word marriage, we're not sharing that word, but he has mentioned that right in the past when making similar comments. Either way, the general point is the same. Bigots get called bigots, and that's a violation of religious freedom. And, you know, I was thinking about it, that's got to be tough. Can you imagine being part of a society that challenges your beliefs? <laughs> it sounds like there's way too much freedom of speech and his talk jumped up its own asshole. <laughs> right? You hate to see it. Yeah. And in less is Mormon news tonight. The New York Times read an article last week detailing all the new changes that the Mormons are making to try to modernize the missionary system. It turns out that Mormon kids these days just don't want to spend two years biking around in overstarched white shirts and shitting with the door open while entirely isolated from their loved ones <laughs> for some reason. And the Mormon church is going to do something about it. To be clear, that's not going to be letting them close the door while they shit. But oh. they're now allowed to also bike around in overstarched <laughs> blue shirts. Ooh, blue shirts. Okay. I was hoping you were going to say, but... They do not have to make hard eye contact anymore during that back stare. <laughs> but, you know, blue shirts, that's that's Look, cool, too. I don't want to get too scatological, but if we could somehow disguise me as a Mormon missionary and have me take a shit with the door open, I'll get that policy <laughs> changed overnight, yeah, right. guys. One fell swoop. You can't avoid his eyes. It's impossible. <laughs> See, it's like the Mona Lisa. So yeah, so so they they have made a few wardrobe changes. Not many men in some areas are now allowed to wear blue shirts and forego the tie. But the far bigger change is that women missionaries are now allowed to wear pants, provided they're wrinkle free and have a conservative color. It's a weird caveat at the end. Are there lots of Mormon women with? wrinkly ass linen harem pants in neon green yeah, yeah, right? worried about. <laughs> I want to hang out with whomever that was for. Yeah, the cool yeah. ass, you know, sister chastity, whatever with the harem <laughs> pants. They're, they're also, by the way, letting missionaries call home once a week instead of the old system, which allowed for two calls home per year, one on Christmas, one on Mother's Day. And just thinking back to myself at 18, living away from home for the first time, I can only imagine what a huge difference that has made for missionary kids. 
Yeah, and that, my friends, is the difference between goys and Jews. If Joseph Smith had suggested that in a room full of Jewish mothers, he wouldn't have had to wait to go to jail to get shot. That's all I'm saying, okay? <laughs> Now, what the biggest changes the church is making with missionaries is how they actually go about Mormoning. This apparently grew out of the pandemic. During the lockdowns, missionaries couldn't go door to door and bother people in the street. So they took to the interwebs and started proselytizing on social media, which it turns out is way the fuck more effective than harassing people in person. The church took notice and now they encourage missionaries to carry smartphones and interact, you know, like the humans do which has led to, among other things, an Instagram video where a dude who is white for a Mormon raps the lyrics, quote, <laughs> I'm studying the Book of Mormon every day and night, so when temptation comes a-knocking, I know I'll be all right, end quote. That rhythm was way too mm -hmm. good. Way too good. It's, yeah, I was going to yeah, say. Well, no, again, this is being done, by the way, because the old version of proselytization was out of touch. Yeah. Also, <laughs> because I reached out to the LDS about helping generate C segments for right. our podcast. Yeah, exactly. right. Yeah. <laughs> Mormons stop bothering people and try to make viral videos. That's what I call a win win win. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Sorry. Noah gave a link to the video of the thing he's talking about. Eli, did you watch it? I did not know. Okay. No? It's, it's amazing. It's a, it's this white guy doing a Mormon rap. He's rolling an oxygen tank behind him, though, mm -hmm. with the tube going up to his face. And I was like, this is this is like a roasting honey pot from Noah. He's just trying to like, <laughs> get me. No. You're going to make fun of the tank? I, <laughs> I will. You're just a bad person with a tank that I feel bad about. <laughs> now, to be clear they're still never allowed to be alone and they still have to shit with the door open to keep from masturbating. They still can't watch TV or play video games or read books that aren't about Jesus or Mormoning uh, or swim or do gymnastics or ride horses or ride motorcycles or participate in winter sports or go rock climbing or practice Seriously? an unapproved musical instrument or, and this one can't be stressed enough, fuck. Well, yeah. Sure. And this is not, by the way, an exhaustive list. So, look, Wrinkle-free pants are nice and all, but I feel like they might have some modernizing left to do. <laughs> <laughs> Still a little room here and there, yeah. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break for a word from this week's second sponsor, Babbel. Eh, get out of here. No, no, it's not eh, it's a Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, hey, okay, but Heath, hey, Carl the Pug of Pegacorn, what, what are you guys doing? Oh, Carl's teaching me New Jersey for our pajama party week. But Heath, this ad is playing during Pajama Party Week. Yeah, but this is this is a get it. A get ahead? Right. Forgot. It's May 29th. Got it. It's 1.47 yep. p.m. Yeah, okay, all right. But Heath. On May 29th. If, if you want to learn a new language, why don't you try Babbel? What's Babbel? Seriously? Carl, really? I'm not on the board yet this year. I want Babbel to be on the board. is the science-based language learning app that actually works. Hey. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Plus, Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. It's true. I used Babbel to brush up on my French for the last time we went, and Anna used it last year to get good with her Swedish before our trip there. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. All right, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, you can get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash scathing. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash scathing, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash scathing. Rules and restrictions may apply. All right, Carl. Guess I'll see you at the pajama party. Uh, I'm actually going to Vegas with Morgan. Oh, man. He said he was busy. Yeah, busy going to Vegas with me. Man. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Scott Free News tonight. I've actually got some good news for you. Thanks to Heather, who sent this one to us at scathingnews at gmail.com. And while you may lure Heath into your story suggestions with dog pictures and Eli with drawings of sexy dragon girls, Heather knows the key to my heart is demographics. And Scotland's <laughs> census data, delayed by more than a year because of COVID, is finally coming out, which means we're finally learning that as of the latest census, more than half of Scotland's population has no religion. Okay. So here's the thing. COVID, obviously bad. However, <laughs> I'm trying to find a little silver lining here. I'm trying to be positive. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. guessing COVID helped with that number. In <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. else, pretty much. 
I mean, to be fair, if you lived in Scotland's weather, you'd stop believing in God, too. I can't believe it took him this long. Yeah, right. So, yeah, so this isn't a huge surprise given the demographic trends in the not quite country, not quite not country, but it's welcome nonetheless. It's also a huge increase over the previous census in a stunning and heartening reminder of just how radically a decade can shift in your favor when you've got young people and your opponents have the old ones. The numbers jumped from 36.7% claiming no religion in 2011 to 51.1% by 2022. You're welcome, Scotland. Yeah, no, we did. Yep. So, and if you're wondering how far behind Scotland the rest of the UK is, well, uh, possibly 11 years because in England and Wales, their numbers almost exactly the 36.7% that Scotland reported on the previous census. And as for Northern Ireland, they'll fucking get there when they get there, I guess. Okay. They are busy chasing Michael Flatley around their town square for his tax They money. have one, the one town square. Weird. <laughs> now, of course- The major driving factor here is age. For decades, fewer and fewer young people have grown up in the church, and as they get older, their more religious forebears die. But that actually doesn't explain all the growth. In every single age group in the census, respondents were less religious than the cohort they represented in the previous census. In other words, this decade's 41 to 50-year-olds are less religious than last decade's 31 to 40-year-olds. At every age, people are leaving religion faster than they're joining it. So this is great news broadly, and it's even greater personally because the three of us know people in Scotland that would hide us when the Inquisition comes. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) We're counting on you, Brian. Next up in headlines, in more than meets the eye news meets, we have a story about (laughs) halal certified meat. (laughs) New Jersey Senator for a little bit longer, Bob Menendez. Oh, Oh! And a major scandal involving bribery, corruption, and fraud. My boy! By which I mean halal meat is bribery, corruption, and fraud. (laughs) Just like kosher meat or any other magical food prep, it's nothing. Or worse. But religion makes people stupid, and they end up paying for magical nothing or worse. So, of course, Bob Menendez wanted a piece of that action, and he did a bunch of his own bribery, corruption, and fraud. According to the prosecution in his ongoing trial... He received bribes from a New Jersey businessman in exchange for helping that guy secure a monopoly on halal certified meat being sent from the U.S. and imported into Egypt. Ah, a high stakes industry indeed. Stakes meat. (laughs) Okay, honestly, I'm surprised counsel hasn't moved for Bob Menendez to be tried for all the corruption he hasn't done to save time. (laughs) It's It's the fucking (laughs) best. It rules. Does it? Okay, well, big thanks to Assad for sending the link to scathingnews at gmail.com. So I'll start with a quick background on Bob Menendez, Eli's He's my hero, already. and I love him. Okay, so his career in politics started in 1986 when he became mayor of Union City, New Jersey. From there, he bribed so many bribes. <laughs> and we're pretty much all caught up. Those bribes include being indicted on federal corruption charges in 2015 for failing to disclose wealthy donor gifts. That went to trial, and the jury was somehow undecided, so the charges got dropped. But he got officially admonished in 2018 by the Senate Ethics Committee, and they released a statement that basically said, yeah, you definitely did that. Juries are dumb. We know you fucking did that. Then a few months later, he got reelected by New Jersey. Hell yeah! Because, uh, you know, at least he's not a Republican. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. But then he got indicted again in October of last year on... You guessed it, more federal corruption charges. He huh. did have more federal, yeah. So he's currently on trial for allegedly acting as a foreign agent of the Egyptian government, not great, including a five-year conspiracy during which he received extensive bribes in exchange for big political favors, one of which was the magical meat thing. And his wife, Nadine, was handling a bunch of the bribes, so she's also being prosecuted. We also learned that she killed a pedestrian during a car accident in 2018 and Bob interfered with a separate prosecution of some rich guy in Jersey in exchange for a Mercedes to replace Nadine's car that she fucked up by, again, smashing into the body of a pedestrian. Jesus Christ. But I need a new car. Well, I I feel like he the evidence. Uh, on audio of you and I condemning people who run down pedestrians and crosswalks could b- come back to bite us professionally. So maybe we <laughs> exactly. Don't what, what's next? You're going to say that you were surprised by the gold bars I've sewn into the coats in my closet? I mean, you know, <laughs> man with standards. Even. Yeah, but Eli just buys another bad car. So it's cool. It's cool. So according to the indictment, Bob and Nadine were taking bribes from a guy named Wael Hanna, 
the owner of the New Jersey-based firm called ISEG Halal Certified, and also two other business associates of HANA, Jose Uribe and Fred Davies. In 2019, that company got awarded a monopoly by the government of Egypt on overseeing Islamic meat magic for everything that's imported from the U.S. And all of a sudden, the cost of magicking a shipping container with 23 tons of meat had increased drastically from its normal price of about $300 per magic per container to something way bigger. So when that happened, the United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA, filed a complaint with Egypt explaining how the monopoly was a bad idea. They also explained that Hana's company didn't seem to have enough staff to handle all that meat magic, nor did Hana or the company have the requisite experience and expertise for that sort of thing. Whatever the fuck that means. Right. Well, <laughs> also, perhaps unrelated, we'll find out at the end of the trial. That same year, Bob Menendez called a high level official at the USDA and told the guy to stop narking on Hana's company. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Wait, but but seriously, how how could you be unqualified for this? You didn't have a you had a low magic meter. Right. Not enough you. potions in your inventory. <laughs> right. Out of what spell slots. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I just love the idea of them calling up Egyptian government and being like, let our meat pole go. Meat pole? Meat pole. Moses, the Ten Commandments. Charlton Heston? Yep, we're all putting it together. Charlton Heston, it's cool. All, it's a great joke, and we all Crush loved it. it. And I did a great job. Why pole, though? Meat. Okay, doesn't matter. So, because people... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I read the indictment. I actually read the whole indictment. It's a truly wonderful piece of comedy writing by accident. It's awesome. We know about all the bribing because following the USDA getting mad about the weird monopoly, the matter was handed over to law enforcement and it was super obvious who to investigate. So prosecutors have thousands of text messages between Bob, Nadine, and Mr. Hanna. In one example, Nadine sent a text to Bob saying almost exact words, I'm mad that our latest bribery check never showed up. Should I email or text the bribery guys about the bribery? And Bob writes back, no, do not email or text. <laughs> There's also a text from Nadine to Mr. Davies that said, hey, I never got that bribe you owe me. And Davies replied, this is an exact quote, Nadine, I personally gave Bob a check for September. Oh, my God. Uh, I am currently committing the crime of my own free volition. Jesus Nadine Christ, Nadine, about dude. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But did, did did I write bribe as the subject line? Of course I wrote bribe <laughs> in the subject line, Nadine. And my favorite part is the description of what the federal agents found when they inspected Bob and Nadine's house in Jersey. First, they found over $480,000 in cash. It was pretty easy to find because the main hiding place <laughs> was the pockets of clothing that was just hanging in the closet. Aww. Even better, this included multiple jackets that literally have Robert Menendez embroidered on the front of the jacket <laughs> and piles of bribery cash in the pockets. How'd that get there? The feds put photos of that in the official indictment because that's super fun. The feds also found literal bars of gold just like weeping with laughter as they take away all the bribes that labeled bribes for Bob in a yeah, box or a jacket right, or yeah, whatever. Exactly. So, because it's great because it's a combination of being a stupid criminal and being a stupid boomer who thinks that like gold is the new raw fire yeah, or yeah. whatever the fuck. <laughs> and in Nine Kampf news, if there's an upside to the constant onslaught of religious bigots demanding monuments of the Ten Commandments be on every piece of public property and in every school since the very second this podcast began. It's that they're idiots, and thus their every attempt to create theocracy is almost always accompanied by banana peel level antics of their own stupidity. And this week was no exception to that, as a former member of the school board in Park Rapids, Minnesota, showed up to a city meeting to demand they erect his monument on school grounds of the Nine Commandments. <laughs> Come on, man. Please tell me he left out the neighbor's wife one for being too salacious. <laughs> okay. I feel like the school board has a great teachable moment here, right? Like, if I'm in charge of the school board, I'm sending that thing back redlined. Right? Like, add the missing ones, <laughs> then the whole thing's crossed out, 
And then like the First Amendment is spray painted over the top. That's so much fun. Right, exactly. yeah, it's on the, yeah. the margins, yeah. A little sad face at the top of it, exactly. It says, see me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so first off, big thanks to Hemet Meta over at the Friendly Atheist blog for bringing this story to our attention. If you haven't checked him out over at FriendlyAtheist.com, you should. Good news, good times, good energy. And sexually arousing Jeopardy skills. Yeah, and crossword skills. Exactly, yeah. Cruciverbalism. He is mm -hmm. a sexually arousing cruciverbalist. Exactly. So That poor fucking guy, because now a bunch of people are going to say, hey, did you guys know that Heath and Eli want to fuck you? And he's going to go, what happened? I'm sorry, Why? what? He's I gonna, was just no, trying I, to There's good... no way he hasn't existed on the planet with us enough to not just go, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's probably, cool. That's, probably <laughs> that's all they said this time? That's dope. Probably Heath because of the crossword and Jeopardy That's thing, nice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is a mild week for me in my little life trying to do a good thing <laughs> quietly. <laughs> Don't be a good person in our circles. All right. The resident <laughs> in question is Dennis Doge to the moon, who sat on the school board in Park Rapids for 32 years until 2022. According to the Park Rapids Enterprise, quote, in his presentation, Doge argued that current society is in a war between good and evil and, quote, Satan seems to be winning because we are allowing him to. And by allowing God to be pushed out of government, churches and homes and schools. OK, so. First of all, I'm pretty sure his man's name is Dodge. But secondly, <laughs> is is God being pushed out of churches? Yeah, churches. I just I don't feel like he is. They bring him up a lot. <laughs> last I checked. Also, if he's gone, maybe he just left because you're all the worst. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. come on, yeah. consider that. that. Didn't yeah. want to be associated with you. He continued, "Quote: Our society has lost its values and its respect for each other." If we can save even one child from Satan's grapes, it is worth every cent we can spend on this donation because God's children are priceless. I, I did go down the rabbit hole on why he said Satan's grapes. It's believed that, that he actually said grasp and they, they mistranslate or they miswrote it in the newspaper. But uh, I love Satan's grapes way better. Yep, exactly. I also choose to just be like, nope, he said grapes. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, so, okay. But I love that what he's saying here is we've lost respect for one another. And I blame the other religions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the problem. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wait a second, Eli, isn't a Ten Commandments monument on school grounds illegal? And yes, the Supreme Court has ruled on that twice. But Doge has an answer. You see, according to an article he found on Voices of America, mm -hmm. and that's the radio station Gerald Ford started, damn it, the U.S. Supreme Court permits the Ten Commandments to be on public property so long as the goal of displaying them is not to gain support for religion. Okay, I feel like that's wrong, but like even if that is the rule, you can display it, but you have to do it with like one audible scoff at me. You have to do it <laughs> scoffing. <laughs> it's the great ruling, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, I saved my favorite part of this story for last because... As I teased at the beginning of this story, Doge included a proposed design for the monument with his proposal. And that design has only nine commandments and they're numbered. It's amazing. Well, bro, okay, so in his defense, the Ten Commandments aren't Ten Commandments, right? No, nine, not. 11, <laughs> and 12. All acceptable answers to how many of the Ten Commandments are there, but there is no logically consistent way to get 10 out of them. <laughs> That's fair, yeah. So uh, not sure why Dodge is pro bearing false witness or building idols. Those are the two he left out. We'll have to follow up with him on that. Until then... I don't love the chances that this thing is going to get through, but this is the scathing atheist and I've been unpleasantly surprised before. OK, so I have a theory as to why he left out the one about graven images and lying. It's because at that time he was lying to get a graven image erected. <laughs> so yeah, it might no, be that'll that. do it. I get it. <laughs> And on that pre-recorded note, we're going to wrap up the headlines. Pre-recorded Heath, pre-recorded Eli. Thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, we'll find out what happens when cults fall on bad times. That's wordplay. You'll get it in a second. You'll get it. Sometimes the lines in our line of work get a little fuzzy. Is this religion or is it woo? Is this a cult or is it an MLM? But whenever the terminology gets tricky, the master category of bullshit will suffice, which we're going to be reminded of once again in this installment of How Bullshit Is It? So tell us, Heath, what brand of bullshit will you be telling us about today? Today, we're going to be talking about the Falun Gong cult. 
Oh, awesome. Fun fact, when we were doing our live show in Toronto, they had this little parade that cut the city in half and I walked right through it because I had places to be and fuck them. <laughs> As well, you should. Nice. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think you should be able to walk through all parades except the Pride Parade and you should be able to walk through the Pride Parade if you're giving out smooches. Okay, so what is the Falun Gong cult? All right, well, let me just start off by saying that's a harder question to answer than it should be. Of all the subjects we've covered on this segment, I feel like this was the hardest to research because the Falun Gong cult is freakishly good at scrubbing the internet of pretty much any honest discussion of exactly how bullshit they in fact are. It'd be really easy to read through their entire Wikipedia article and just think they were a persecuted Chinese religious sect that just wants to teach people proper breathing techniques. And that's it. And that's, that's not what they are. <laughs> no, it's not. They are a right-wing, racist, homophobic, apocalyptic cult that reveres their leader as a living god. Okay, yeah, no, that's different. Very different, yeah. Okay, so, so how does the Falun Gong cult start? It starts, innocently enough, actually. It starts with breathing. Uh, I think you might be going back too far, <laughs> Heath. That's, uh... No, not just regular breathing, magical breathing. Falun Gong starts with the spiritual practice of Qigong, and they claim they're able to use it for healing sick people through meditation and controlled breathing. Oh, and, and can they? No. <laughs> no yeah, that's what I thought. All. all right, so Qigong was already bad, and then Falun Gong made it worse? Exactly. And for that, we have Li Hongji to thank. Okay, so who is this uh, Li Hongji? Until 1992, he was an entirely unremarkable government clerk in China. <laughs> Unless you believe the Falun Gong propaganda, in which case he was a living god just, you know, biding his time as a low-level clerk until his early 40s. Huh. Weird place to bide your time. Can I say yeah, that? Can I give yeah. God that note? Yeah. Either way, <laughs> at the age of 41, he looked at Qigong and thought to himself, I could add more bullshit to that. So he did. In addition to claiming he could use controlled breathing to heal people, he also said it would prepare them to enter heaven in the next life. <laughs> and just in case eternal paradise wasn't enough, he also said that mastering his breathing techniques would allow practitioners to fly and see through walls. Oh! Yeah. So, so presumably Li Hongzhi can fly and see through walls? <laughs> he sure can, but just not when you're looking. Ah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dancing yeah. frog style. Get you. Every time. Okay. As much as I hate to say this, just saying you can cure disease and give people superpowers with proper breathing techniques is not generally enough to make it onto this segment. Not generally, no. And can I say, says a lot about the state of bullshit. It does though. Are, we have to have it. higher standards. Okay, so what else does Li Hongzhi teach? That he's a living God. There it is. We there found it. it is, <laughs> well, there it starts, actually. Because once a leader guy declares himself a living God, yeah, already firmly in cult territory, but it remains to be seen what the guy is going to do with his God status once he claims it. Oh, oh, I'm going to take a wild guess that <laughs> it's have sex with whatever member they want to. <laughs> well, yeah, that's one of the things, definitely. As fucked up as it is, that's basically like the free space on the cult bingo card. But psychological rape is just the tip of the iceberg with the Falun Gong cult. Okay, so where should we start? Let's start where they start. Proper breathing. So one of the most successful recruitment strategies the cult has, or had before they got a multi-million dollar advertising budget, was to meet up in parks and do guided meditations. And if you see a big group doing breathing techniques and they're not charging any money, you might be thinking, okay, what possible harm could come from breathing better? So people start showing up to join in the entirely harmless meditations in the park. And, and that presumably is when they get you... Well, not right away. They like to ease you into it. But ultimately, what they'll teach you is that their spiritual practice can put an energy source in your abdomen called a phalan. And if you breathe correctly, you can use the phalan to collect and transmit energy and improve your health. What's the spin situation with that? You're probably wondering. Great question. <laughs> That's thank you. The Fallon is always spinning. It's always rotating. <laughs> and when it rotates clockwise, you're probably wondering about like clockwise and counterclockwise. Yo, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when it goes clockwise, it gathers energy. And when it goes counterclockwise, it transmits energy. And for reasons that 
I didn't have time to wrangle from the rabbit hole. Maybe you could figure it out. Whenever they represent this process, they do it with a like a spinning swastika emoji thing. Ah, oh, that's fun. two swastika cults in a row, guys. I'm I'm starting to think that symbol might not have the noblest of intentions. Right? I think that, might not. Right. Yeah. Okay. So so what is Fallon? So glad you asked. According to their website, quote, Fallon is the miniature of the universe with all the abilities of the universe. It can automatically move in rotation. It will forever rotate in your lower abdomen area. Once installed in your body, it will no longer stop and will forever rotate like this year in and year out. Burning the time when it rotates clockwise, it can automatically absorb energy from the universe and it can also transform energy from itself to supply the required energy for every part of your body transformation, end quote. Okay, uh, follow-up question. What? <laughs> yeah, there's a <laughs> no lot, idea, lot of man. energies in there. The <laughs> I feel like this clerk just ate a fidget spinner and was like, fuck, 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 I got to figure out how to explain this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but, but again, not to downplay how genuinely dangerous this kind of shit is, but so far, all we have is fucking Gwyneth Paltrow ad copy. I feel like they get way worse, though. <laughs> well, it would be awesome if I could differentiate them from other religious bullshit by pointing to their homophobia here, but sadly, that's pretty much every type of religion. <laughs> At yeah. Falun Gong, they teach that gayness is a sin and that LGBTQ people can't go to heaven. Yeah, again, that's actually pretty mild compared to a lot of religion, definitely including most of American Christianity. Mm. Well, look, Keith, if you put a dick up your ass, you're going to block the eternally spinning fan. That's well, obvious. Right. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> but, podcast listener, I wrote that as a joke and then I Googled it and that's actually kind of why they're homophobic. <laughs> like, is. yeah. Uh -huh. wait, what? Yeah, it, it interferes with the Fallon. Yeah. You know, wow. The phallus and the Fallon get into a fight there. It seems like yeah. that would improve. It doesn't matter. Because you know they're picturing like a... Yeah. <laughs> I was too, but I was like, that would improve. It doesn't matter. But yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Up your game. Exactly. All right. So do they have any other bigotries you could share? So many. So many, <laughs> Noah. The whole root of their religious dogma is deeply xenophobic. Everything's about keeping things pure. And when Li Hongji says pure, he means... Chinese. Yeah. All the ills of the world, according to his doctrine, are the result of races mixing together. Mm. His organization is diametrically opposed to the Chinese Communist Party, but not because of the party's atrocious human rights record or their fascist levels of social control. He hates them because communism is a European idea and therefore tainted. I, well, I can't imagine the Chinese Communist Party cares much why he opposes <laughs> them, though. They do not care, which is why they banned the Falun Gong cult in 1999, forcing Hong Ji to flee to America. But he knew that was coming, so he'd already headquartered the organization in upstate New York. And over the last 25 years, their headquarters has expanded out into a massive facility they call Dragon Springs. Okay, so so wait, so so the Chinese group whose core teaching is that culture shouldn't mix moved its headquarters to New to York? New York, sure mm -hmm. did, yep. All right. Fun fact, the bus I used to take home from college was exclusively for drug dealers carrying too many drugs to take a plane and people in that cult going to their oh. super cool retreat space. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> All right, so so did the leader have a change of heart on that on that racism that clearly he's in violation, like a latter revelation of some sort? Not even remotely. According to Hong Ji, there are separate but equal heavens for all the different races. What? Yep. So that means, according to him, among other things, there's no heaven for mixed race people. During a lecture he gave in Sydney, he called them, quote, physically and intellectually incomplete End quote. Oof. He says that race mixing is part of an alien plot to drive humanity further away from the gods. Marklar, how goes our plan to corrupt the humans? <laughs> yep, working on it in loving Virginia. <laughs> Just um, <laughs> really taking some time there. There's aliens now? And this particular brand of xenophobia also leads them to largely reject all of science and modern medicine because those are, you know, quote, Western. They literally brag on the website about how at the Dragon Springs compound, quote, there's barely a screw, nail, or metal joint 
to be found, end quote. What? And can I say buildings without nails and screws sounds like a great idea as long as the Chinese government never get their hands on a big bad wolf. I think that's the only weakness right now. Or any angry birds of any kind. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> of course, officially, Falun Gong is not anti medicine because, you know, that would get them sued. Right. Yeah. So they have all kinds of teachings that say approximately if you're sick, you should go to the hospital, of course, wink. But they also <laughs> teach you that you can cure all disease and disability through proper breathing and that needing medicine is a sign that you lack sufficient faith in dear leader. Hmm. Okay, so this shit gets people killed. All the time. Practitioners and their kids, of course. It also prolongs illness and makes minor problems into major ones. All right. Any other insane teachings that we should know about? Okay. How about the claim that the Chinese government is trying to harvest their organs? Yeah, no, that feels like it qualifies at the very least. Right. Yeah. This one's fucking nuts. One of their teachings, which Hangzhi lifted directly from ancient Chinese mythology, is that there are five essential organs in your torso, the liver, lungs, heart, kidneys, and spleen. Fuck the intestines, I guess. <laughs> right? <laughs> Stomach. Useless. <laughs> and they think that using their breathing techniques strengthens those organs, which means that Falun Gong practitioners have the very best livers and lungs, etc. Mm -hmm. The best livers, the strongest livers, <laughs> man, woman, cow, horse, liver. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, pin in that voice. Wait, wait, okay, wait. So that's why the government is trying to steal their livers. Exactly. And, oh that is God. why, because they're amazing livers. Yeah. Because of the breathing. Now, lest I be unclear on how evil the Chinese government is, they do harvest organs from executed prisoners, which Ooh. I mean, executing prisoners is barbaric, but not harvesting their organs at that point afterwards is just wasteful. He, so like, is, what I, did we I, say I, about I, organ harvesting? I, apologetics I, 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 I'm, on the podcast. I'm getting off track. <laughs> I'm getting off track. The point is, the claim about getting their organs harvested isn't quite as delusional as it sounds when you first hear it, especially when you consider how liberally China dishes out death penalties. But the idea that the government is after specifically Falun Gong livers or that Falun Gong organs fetch a higher price on the black market, both of which are actual claims Hong Ji makes, those claims are every bit as delusional as they sound. Yeah, but imagine how bad your government has to be that we have to be like, yes, they're organ thieves, but they're not targeted organ thieves. Yeah, right, thieves. right. Okay, <laughs> so is that at least the craziest thing they believe? Nope. Nope. Yep. Oh, damn They it. also have a very, like, David Ikean belief about alien demons from another dimension disguising themselves as humans and secretly ruling the world. God damn it. Hungji claims that Xi Jinping and his inner circle are literal alien demons sent to destroy Chinese culture. The cult also believes Hangji can read people's minds and that he has angels disguised as humans wandering around reading minds for him too. So you never know when he's listening in on your thoughts. Yeah, the secret is to look away so he starts flying and passing through walls as a reflex. <laughs> right, and that's how you right, get him. There you go. <laughs> But of all the terrible things that Falun Gong is, perhaps the worst is that they're pro-Trump. Uh. Hangji declared a few years back that Trump was a divine figure sent to rid the world of the Chinese communist government. Huh. So how's, how's that working out for him? <laughs> well, in terms of getting rid of the Chinese Communist Party, not great. But in no. terms of roping in new adherents, it's been a goldmine. The anti-communist, anti-Chinese pro-racist rhetoric of Falun Gong was music to the MAGA ears, of course, and Falun Gong leaned in hard. They started or supported a whole bunch of far-right conspiracy nut YouTube channels and websites. They pushed their pet conspiracies through the typical QAnon channels, and they even partnered with Steve fucking Bannon to produce an anti-China documentary. Really? Okay, here's my question. Do these people, like, 
do lunches. Right. Because I'm just picturing Steve Bannon and Kanye West at a medium nice steak restaurant trying to make small talk with a guy who won't stop saying he's God. <laughs> and I have to admit, <laughs> it tickles me. It tickles me. I enjoy is it. Is the guy Kanye or is the guy from... Um, yeah, right. right. I think they're all saying it yeah. except for yeah. Steve who's just like, I can't believe we only had one vegetarian option. Okay, we all agree on DEFCON though, right? DEFCON. Right, come on. Yeah, we all, all think that is great. <laughs> so this, of course, leads us to perhaps their most visible outreach, the Epoch Times. The Epoch Times has at least the veneer of a legitimate news source, and Falun Gong vehemently denies owning it. Huh. It's just that everyone who works for them, other than two token Christians, is in fact a Falun Gong practitioner, and everything they write at that source supports Li Hangji's delusional view of the world. So that's their biggest outreach program? Well, it tries to be. They spent millions in advertising it on Facebook and YouTube until both platforms kicked them off for dishonest advertising practices. And I want everybody to take a second here and reflect on just how misleading your ads have to be before Facebook and YouTube refuse to take your money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Keep in mind, Facebook just announced that you are allowed to lie about who won the election in your political ads. Yep. And they're like, nah, those Fallon guys, are, they're too far. Yeah. It's a little too far, a little crazy. <laughs> now, I should say that if we're most familiar with Fallon Gong through the Epoch Times, that could be the case because that's the outreach they target specifically to middle-aged men. And yeah, admittedly, that, that is me. They also have a variety of YouTube and TikTok channels, though, to reach younger people, and a dance troupe called Shen Yun. Fuck yeah, they do. targeted <laughs> at middle-aged women and me in Ann Arbor, Michigan on every <laughs> billboard. I, so I'm sorry, they have a dance troupe? Like, they present their batshit philosophies in interpretive <laughs> dance? Not at all. The whole point of their outreach is the veneer of respectability. So the last thing they want you to learn about is all the crazy shit underpinning their entire worldview. And I mean that literally. They want you to learn a whole bunch of things, but in a very specific order, the last of which is all the crazy shit. Okay, so what, what do they want you to learn first? That they're an oppressed religious group withering under the thumb of communist repression. Right now, Shen Yun is touring the country with a show called China Before Communism. All the advertising is claiming it's just a tour through Chinese history via the art of dance. And that's largely what it is, but they make subtle reinforcements of the Falun Gong narrative throughout, and the whole thing culminates in a won't you please help the repressed people of China pitch that aims you at their fundraising and, of course, their indoctrination system. It's like the second half of the show and people bring their kids. <laughs> right, it yeah. Fucking rule. We should go and just film our fellow audience members. <laughs> yeah, no, right, that has to be allowed, right? All right. Well, there are <laughs> really a million questions I'd love to ask, but we're out of time. So I guess I'm going to have to settle for just one more. How bullshit is it? Okay. I'm going to say electrostatic tummy dynamo with a swastika. Sometimes you just have to name the thing <laughs> they do. It, it's yeah. Nazi care bears levels of bullshit. <laughs> it's all right. And with that incredibly disturbing and disturbingly incredible image in your mind, we're going to wrap up this segment, but don't worry. There's always more bullshit to come. Before we push this episode out of the nest, I want to remind all our patrons that the Pajama Party live stream is coming up this Saturday, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So stay tuned for a link. You're going to get that in your email or you'll be able to find it on the Patreon page. See you there. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight. But we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be able to look out for a brand new episode of our Sister Show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies debuting at 7 Eastern on Tuesday and an even newer episode of our Half Sister Show's Citation Needed debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I couldn't hold my head up high enough and neglected to thank Keith Enright for teaching me to hope, Eli Bosnick for teaching me to believe in myself, and Lucinda delusions for teaching me that the real treasure was the friends we made along the way. I want to thank Marsh, Nicola, Thomas, and Lydia in advance for helping us with the pajama party this year. I also need to thank Matt for providing this week's epic Farnsworth rap. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people, 
whose names I don't know because I'm recording this like last week, but I will thank you by name next week. Suffice to say, though, the Matreon was a huge success the year, this year with a grand total of 979 new and upgrading patrons. And by name or no, I will never thank you enough. Together, these 979 people helped perpetuate our profane pablum this week by giving us money. Not everybody has the money it takes to give some of that shit to us, but if you do, you can do that shit in June, too. Just make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash scathing atheist, whereby you'll only access us to an extended ad free version of every episode, or you can make a one time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but not in a money way, you can also help a ton by leaving us a five star review, telling a friend about the show, and following us on social media. And speaking of social media, Tim Robertson handles that for us, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission, except for the Farnsworth quote, which was written by Matt. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. His presentation, Doge argued that I think current it's just so- dodge. Oh, dodge. Yeah, that's the word dodge. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC, copyright 2024, all rights reserved.